Good afternoon. It's a pleasure welcoming my dear friend, uh, Dr. Veda Vyas Kundu. Uh, Dr. Kundu will talk about uh, importance of nonviolent communication for dialogues. Dr. Veda Vyas Kundu is the program officer at Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, New Delhi. He has expertise in nonviolent communication, conflict resolution, and peace studies. He has also worked extensively on media literacy and peace. He has been conducting training in these areas for different stakeholders, including the judiciary, police, teachers, and youth. You're welcome, Dr. Kundu. Uh, you have till five o'clock uh, for your session, and you are welcome to conduct it however you like to. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Basad. Uh, it's a really great privilege uh, to be amidst you. In fact, uh, it's been almost six months then we launched this course and uh, in dialogue foundation has been doing very interesting and innovative work and <laughs> gandhi's always yeah. had the pleasure of uh, uh, working in association with in dialogue foundation we always have had the uh, gandhi seminar right uh, around uh, 2nd october every year and uh, it's a, it's really heartening that we have been able to collaborate with the in dialogue foundation for this very very innovative course on uh, dialogues and the essence of dialogues and in fact i've been following all the sessions that uh, razad has been organizing has been uh, getting all the very good and excellent speakers for this whole course for all of you and i'm sure each one of you must have learned a lot each one of you must have absorbed quite a lot of things from the really distinguished uh, uh, speakers that uh, Bezad has been inviting. It, I know it takes a lot of uh, efforts. Uh, I'm really sorry that uh, from our part, we have not been able to contribute that which should have been. But uh, nevertheless, it has been a great experience I've been following. And in fact, our director, Mr. Dipankar Sri Gyan, has been constantly, I've been updating him and he's very, very excited about it, uh, about the whole uh, result of this whole uh, initiative it's quite a very good experience and i'm sure uh, at the end of uh, your all the uh, you know talks uh, probably next week uh, you'll all have some really great uh, stories to tell on the different dimensions of dialogue that you were exposed to <clears throat> today's uh, session what we are going to uh, traverse is how important is non-violent communication in the process of uh, initiating or conducting a dialogue. Of course, I will not go much uh, on the process of dialogue and uh, how you conduct a dialogue and all, because you have all already been exposed. You have already been talking about it for the last so many months on this. So at, in depth with some really great scholars. So there is no need of going on the nitty gritties of how to conduct a dialogue, what is a dialogue and all those stuff. I will focus totally on the aspect of nonviolent communication. Because when we are talking of dialogue, the essence is communication. Without being an effective communicator, without understanding how to use communication, the tools of communication, you can't uh, ensure a successful dialogue. For any dialogue, communication is the in thing, it is the fulcrum. So in that context, uh, what I will talk about would be the whole idea of how nonviolent communication is the essential ingredient or a strategy that needs to be integrated in any dialogue process so that we can have a very constructive and a meaningful result out of it. So we will traverse today on what is nonviolent communication, why it is needed in today's world, and <clears throat> the what, the why, and how of nonviolent communication and how we use it in our daily practices. It's not just in the context of initiating or getting it involved in the process of a dialogue, but also in the process of any relationships for that matter, how dialogue is very, very critical. <clears throat> so we will start with it. Also, when we are talking of nonviolent communication in today's world, what is very, very critical as we find that there are so much of, uh, you know, differences, conflicts, so much of issues of uh, uh, tension between different groups, different communities, different people, groups of people. Uh, one of the biggest uh, 
uh, challenge is on the, one of the biggest problem that has happened is because of the dysfunctional communication that we are going through. Each one of us feel that what we feel, what our perception is, what our perspective is, it is correct, whereas the others are not. So there is always a problem of dysfunctional communication ecosystem. Our key ecosystem, communication ecosystem overall has become, seems to be a lot of, lot violent, a lot aggressive uh, in the context of also uh, of the today's materialistic world. And as we uh, move into more and more, uh, uh, you know, materialism, we seek to ensure that we get into that whole situation. So, and also the whole challenge of high grade individualization of our societies. So the challenge today hence is how we develop a healthy communication ecosystem. <clears throat> if our communication ecosystem is not healthy, what is going to be the end problem, end result? It would be that it is possible that we might have a problem in our relationships, whether in our family, with our friends, in, in different organizations. It could also result in a situation where we will get really tensed. Uh, it will lead to a lot of stress factor, a lot of possibly health issues if we are always tensed, if we are aggressive in our communication efforts. So in that context, to ensure a healthy communication ecosystem. The important is to understand the art and science of non-violent communication. Essentially, we will be working on that part of it. And so we will start our PowerPoint presentation with that. Uh, may I request if uh, this is uh, seen, this PowerPoint. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, for your Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti uh, is running a very very successful free online course on nonviolent communication. Uh, and uh, it is present in our website also. In fact, uh, it is available not only in our website, but also in the website of MyGov. Also, the Central Board of Secondary Education here in India, they have adopted this and it is also available through the platform of the Central CBSC. Uh, all, uh, for your information, we have been conducting this uh, training workshop on nonviolent communication for not just uh, students and universities within India, but also majorly in different universities across the world. We have had a uh, workshop with universities right from Philippines to Bangladesh, Kyrgyzstan, Spain, Malawi, uh, Uganda. Uh, it is This uh, course is also available in English, Hindi, Tamil and Malayalam at this stage. Also, this course has been developed and translated into Swahili, the local African language, and it has been introduced in some schools of Uganda in Swahili. So uh, for your also inform information from our platform and the MyGov platform, more than 10,000 participants have done this course. And from the CBSC platform, more than 70,000 participants, teachers, students, and parents have registered and doing this course. So let me introduce you to this whole realm of non-violent communication. And also while we talk about this whole idea of non-violent communication, I request you to uh, really reflect on how important are some of these elements of non-violent communication vis-a-vis -vis the whole process of dialogue. In fact, <clears throat> one second. Let me start with this uh, important uh, quote of UNESCO in 2013, when uh, UNESCO says, peace should never be taken for granted. It is an ongoing process, a long-term goal, which requires constant engineering, vigilance, and active participation by all individuals. It is a choice to be made on each situation, an everyday life decision to engage in sincere dialogue with other individuals and communities, whether they live a block or a click away. You see the underlining issue in this, underlining point in this is that key A, it requires constant engineering. Also, just please underline how 
it is important the essence of sincere dialogue with different individuals and communities if we have to really realize the goals of peace so uh, with that point in mind <coughs> as students of communication these are some of the simple points some of the simple issues that have been uh, looking at uh, you see at a very very simplistic level uh, uh, we look at communication just think of a situation where you are not in a position to communicate whether with yourself or with the outside world you see in that context uh, one of the most basic definition of communication is we cannot not communicate there is no time in the world where we don't communicate whether we communicate with ourselves or we communicate with the outside world so this is something a very very basic feature of the whole thing but what is important if you realize is that ki how we communicate and what we communicate it determines our relationships with others that is something very very important you know the manner in which we talk the manner in which we communicate it really determines how our relationship is in fact uh, communication is something very important in the sense ki it can it has the ability to either spoil our relationship or unite conflicting parties just think of a situation where you are in a problem uh, a tiff you are having some kind of a problem with your uh, kith and kin so what is the main fulcrum is that it is possibly a dysfunctional communicational uh, any system it is possible because of some miscommunication misunderstanding so uh, that is something very important also you see when we are talking of communication it can actually offer wisdom and help to a friend or a stranger or offer abuse and perpetuate hatred so it has a dual role communication in fact uh, if we go back and see the history you if you, or many of you might remember the rwanda genocide and the role of radio mile uh in rwanda know how uh, the whole uh, rwanda genocide and the whole fire, you know uh, genocide between the hutsis and the tutsis emanated because of the radio uh, radio mile in rwanda that was something very very uh, critical to look at the negative role of communication so we need to look where on one side there is a positive aspect on the other side there is a negative aspect <clears throat> in fact when we do this workshop we sometimes uh, talk about and uh, we in fact when there is a larger audience we do some of these very interactive uh, uh, you know uh, work uh, work with uh, our participants when we ask them to write in the chat box some of these points that i'm share with you since it is more of an interactive session we need not uh, focus on this uh, <clears throat> so uh, basically uh, these are some of the work points that we give to our participants when we do this workshop there so let us not focus on this here let me again uh, talk on the essence of communication how communication helps in molding our realities you see we need to introspect we need to think how the way we are communicating it is actually helping mold our rea realities our perspectives and emotions also it makes us to feel more connected to each other in fact if you see the first and the foremost form of communication emanates from our mind what we are thinking and the, uh, like what we are thinking that is our inter self communication what we call as a intrapersonal communication our thought process the way we communicate with ourselves and then it comes to see how the communication is the reflection of the inner workings of our mind it you know it starts you know and then we go on to communicate with the others so everything we communicate originates from the thought processes so these are some of the very very important points to be need to be kept in mind when we are thought thinking of our own communication ecosystem that we are expecting to have <clears throat> because as i said much of the problem in today's world is because of a dysfunctional communication ecosystem that we inherit or that we contribute to and that could that is because of much of the issues that we have you know when we are talking of conflicts there are three basic categories on why uh, conflict emanates one is the perception second is the emotion and third is communication in the 
basic three categories. So that is the whole way it happens. <clears throat> Hence, as I said, one of the biggest challenge to our communication ecosystem uh, is that how it becomes a source of positive coexistence and creation of values. So, <clears throat> Uh, Bezad, yeah, can you give me one second? There is one someone calling me constantly. Just give yeah. me one second. Sure, sure. Maybe. Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, so, <clears throat> hence the challenge is how our communication ecosystem uh, becomes a source of positive coexistence and creation of values. That is a challenge for each one of us, each one individual today. You see how it, you know, how we can develop a communication ecosystem, which actually is a source of positive coexistence and creation of values that we need to look at. And when we are linking it with whole notion of dialogue, whole notion of, uh, you know, conversation, engagement, this is something very important. Because when we are talking of dialogues, when we are talking of in the context of positive conversation, then our communication ecosystem needs to be uh, very positive. It needs to be healthy and it needs to have uh, different elements which are not aggressive, which are not violent in nature and also it contributes to value creation. <clears throat> in fact, we have this beautiful quote of uh, Lord Buddha, when we say that words have both the power to destroy and heal. When words are both true and kind, they can change our world. Here in this context, as we are talking of nonviolent communication, let me share with you, you know, there are different discourses of nonviolent communication. And if you see the different cultures and societies across the world, uh, you will find that it has been part of every culture and uh, every societies. And if you see in the context of the Eastern culture, you see the whole ideas of Buddha, the whole ideas of Jain or uh, other philosophers, the whole idea of communication, whole idea was on focusing on nonviolent communication. Also, uh, at this stage, I would like to share with you, there is no whole discourse of, uh, uh, in the global context, in today's situation, a uh, whole concept of a Western approach to nonviolent communication and what we call, uh, what we are talking about, the Eastern context. In fact, uh, only some time back, I had a very, very interesting discussion with a scholar from the United uh, King, uh, from England. And he was saying, Ki, why, uh, how can you use the word nonviolent communication? Because uh, according to him, the word nonviolent communication has been used by uh, uh, the American scholar, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. And then we, I brought to him some of these Eastern traditions uh, uh, and culture and said, said that how it has been part of our culture since centuries. For instance, even in the uh, in that uh, great epic from uh, 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 Thirukural, uh, in Thirukural you will find different, different chapters. There is one full chapter focusing on the art of uh, listening. So it has been part of the ancient traditions and culture. If you go to many of these cultures, you will find how non-violence, non-violent communication, uh, non-aggressiveness, this has been part of the culture. So it is not that it has come up something new and that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about the discourse on non-violent communication in the global context in today's world. <clears throat> What Mahatma Gandhi has said, I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil it does is permanent. <clears throat> uh, there is this beautiful book. Uh, in fact, I've read this, Thai, Mazur and Wendy Wood. In fact, they wrote this beautiful book, Do Not Harm, Mindful Engagement for a World in Crisis, where they have actually interviewed uh, eminent people across the world where they've tried to who, who have been working on the issue of promoting mindfulness, mindful awareness, awareness, uh, those who have been working on the whole issue of not harming others or the issues of non-killing. So they have
have said that words hold power that can be used to instigate or neutralize any given experience. They can be used as weapons, either offense or defense. We need to be aware of the energy that our language, our words hold and use them for the greater good. So this is what Thais, Mazur and Wendy would have said. Here, when we talk of a nonviolent communication, let me tell you at this stage that it is all about how we reframe the way we speak, the re reframe the way in we you know converse. That is something important. See, all of us have been uh, you know uh, used to talking in one particular way. The whole idea is how we reframe from that position how we reframe our whole uh, way in which we talk uh, using different type of choice of words and language, the style on which we are talking. That is something very important and essential when we are talking of non-violent communication. So reframing from the usual way from that we are used to. Like I am used to say, for instance, uh, talking to X, Y, Z in a particular way, and it might not be very uh, good. It might be hurting some time to the other person. When I am practicing non-violent communication, then I am I, I am having those skill sets to reframe from the my usual way to a different way, which will be more conducive and which will have a better uh, impact on that person, which will be more engaging. As Abraham Lincoln has said, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes are rose. How you put the same thing in a different way is the way in which we can practice nonviolent communication. Also at this stage, I want to underline that there is no such thing like A plus B equals to C formula of how we practice nonviolent communication in our daily life. It is something we need to practice. We need to have commitment to practice nonviolent communication. Here, when I'm talking of reframing, I will give you an uh, interesting insight. Uh, you see, Gandhi Smithy has been uh, conducting this program uh, for not just students or teachers, but we have been doing it for the judicial officers, lawyers, prosecutors, even uh, other people uh, in different parts of the country. So uh, I remember last to last year, we had done with one of the district courts here in Delhi, uh, this program on how we can use nonviolent communication for meaningful interaction between the bar and the bench. So after a month when I went back for uh, feedback with those uh, P participants, so the president of that bar association, he said, you see, most of the time lawyers are attuned to being very aggressive uh, when they are, you know, arguing a particular case. So uh, he said that or probably after taking uh, that session with us, uh, he felt he, uh, rather than the usual way in which he put up his case, he said that he was trying consciously trying to use a different way, reframing the way has been used to do it. And he felt that he was much more effective, uh, yet not aggressive when he was putting up that case. So it has a lot of interesting uh, results uh, when we are trying to use nonviolent communication in different settings. And that is something we need to keep in mind. So, as I said, it is all about how we reframe. So, it will guide us to reframe our thoughts and communication process. And we are used to respond and communicate in a particular way, which we think is proper. So, in fact, uh, as I said, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg in the Western world, uh, his whole idea of uh, nonviolent communication. And in fact, if you read his one of his earliest books, uh, he in his preface, he has written, he got this idea uh, from Mahatma Gandhi's Satyagraha and he thought he would like to use Gandhi's Satyagraha principles of Satyagraha into practical purpose in the contemporary world. And that's how he used various Gandhian principles when he was trying to uh, develop his framework of nonviolent communication. So the question here is, why do we need a strong foundation for a nonviolent communication ecosystem? Now we go to the whole 
this is what uh, what are the uh, why we need a non uh, non violent communication we have talked about now what exactly is non violent communication and what are the foundational architecture of non violent communication what i say is that ki you see for every building uh, you see there will be pillars if the pillars are weak then the building collapses there is every possibility of the building collapsing so what are the pillars of non violent communication and here we come with the five pillars of gandhian non violence and these are something very very basic in fact many times when especially when we have sessions with uh, young people they feel that it is very very complicated very tough very difficult to follow gandhian principles in today's world and when we talk about this five simple principles it things get much easier because these are something which are not complicated these are not very difficult and yet they are very very if we practice in our daily life you see much of the conflicts today happen because there is not much respect for each other much of the disputes much of the differences of opinion emanates because of the lack of uh, respect so the first and foremost pillar of gandhian non violence is respect you see that is the most important aspect if i have respect for you even if i am having differences of opinion uh, with you then even then the possibility that the conflict will not you know go out of hand there is a big possibility because we are respecting each other if i am respecting each other then i will be able to respect your positions also so when we are respecting each other it leads to the second pillar of gandhi and non violence that is understanding so when i am respecting you then it is possible that i will have a greater understanding of your viewpoints even though i may not agree with you so that is something very very critical so respect leads to understanding and understanding when i am able to understand your viewpoints when i am able to assimilate and uh, you know critically look at your viewpoints it is much easier to accept your viewpoints so respect leads to understanding and understanding leads to acceptance of each other's position so when i am accepting your your position even though i may not agree with you then there are chances that the conflict will not happen or even if it is there we will be able to resolve it constructively because at the end of the day what is important is how we ensure a constructive uh, uh you know resolution of any kind of disputes or differences there the fourth important pillar of kanyan non violence is appreciation <clears throat> you see in today's world what happens is that we we are all into so much of negativity there are so much of negative emotions within us there is so much of negative communication happening so we possibly get up in the morning and we will start looking at our you know the social media so much of uh, extreme positions so much of things that are there so lot of negative energies around us friends what is the challenge before each one of us is that if we can try and see how we can uh you know practice the idea of positive appreciation you know appreciating the small little good things that are happening around us appreciating the small little good things that might be happening with us it will help us in uh, evolving positive energies because what we need is positive energies positivity so with so much of negative emotions we might get a lot of stress will be there we might become aggressive we will have lot of tension so that is a problem so but if we are have having the positive energies positivity and if we are able to appreciate the positive things around us that really helps and overcome many of the negative things and we should we will be able to look at world in a more positive way we will be able to look at in a more creative way so respect understanding acceptance appreciation that is positive appreciation and the fifth pillar of kanyan non violence is compassion compassion for everyone here at this stage also let me tell you when we are talking of the gandhian approach to non violent communication we are looking at a very very wider holistic uh, point of view it is not just human to human uh communication it is also uh you know it encompasses the uh, 
communication between nature with the nature and all other living beings because what we are looking at in a more cosmocentric approach to human nature that is the essence of human interconnectedness if you realize uh, if you have read the uh, human development report the last human development report when it talks about the anthropocene the uh, move to the final frontiers. I don't exactly remember the exact name. It starts with Anthropocene. Uh, it says that we are in this era of Anthropocene where human-centric approaches, it is an era where we human are, you know, taking the lead in t doing everything. This is the epoch, epoch of uh, human-centric initiatives, human-centric approaches. We are not looking at a nature-centric approach or in the approach of other living beings. And because of this, the whole lot of complex problems that have arisen across the world, especially as we talk in today's context of COVID-19 and other environmental issues. <clears throat> so when we are talking of the Gandhian approach to nonviolent communication, it is holistic. It talks of human interconnectedness and the essence of uh, cosmocentric approach to human nature. So in that context, we need to have respect, not just for other human beings, but respect for nature, respect, respect for all other living beings. So this is what there. In fact, uh, some time back when I was having a session uh, with uh, friends, uh, one of the universities in Kyrgyzstan, I brought in the, uh, I talked about a new uh, concept of that we need to uh, as challenge before us with all these challenges before us, we need to be what I, we can say human interconnectedness intelligence needs to be there. Like when we are talking of emotional intelligence, when we are talking of cultural intelligence, so we need to be human uh, interconnectedness intelligent understand until we are, we know how the nuance of uh, human interconnectedness in today's world, we will be in serious trouble as we are already there. So. With these five pillars of Gandhian nonviolence, we go in talk of nonviolent communication now. Uh, with these five pillars of Gandhian nonviolence, let us try to see what exactly is nonviolent communication. It is simple, very simplistic to say that uh, yes, nonviolent communication is complete nonviolence in our communication. But, but let us try to see uh, interesting explanation of what is nonviolent communication. And it has been given uh, by a very senior Gandhian, Natva Thakkarji. And uh, <clears throat> he has done immense work in the Northeast. Uh, he had started the Nagaland Gandhi Ashram. Of course, he's no more. He passed away two years back. So uh, he had done a lot of work of Gandhian constructive work and also the whole work of emotional bridge building between, say, the Nagaland and the rest of the country. So here is his explanation on what exactly is nonviolent communication. In fact, I find it to be a very apt explanation of all the various definitions and explanations that might be there uh, in uh, academic uh, writings on nonviolent communication. In fact, he goes to the extent of saying that we need to be nonviolent communication literate. No, he says we need to have critical uh, literacy vis a vis nonviolent communication, in, especially in today's world. He says to me, nonviolent communication literacy would mean how our communication efforts should be nonviolent, how our ability and capacity to communicate not only with ourselves but with our family and society be non-violent in all aspects. And overall, how the entire process of communication, whether between individuals, groups, communities, and the world at large, should be non-violent in nature. He further says, this would entail deep understanding of the art and science of non-violence and its centrality in all our daily actions. It's not just verbal and non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication literacy would also include whether our thoughts and ideas are non-violent or not. <clears throat> so uh, basically when we are talking of non-violent communication, he says that it is not just our verbal and non-verbal communication. These are very important, but also it is our thoughts and ideas how important they are and how non-violent they are. So that is the whole idea of uh, non-violent communication as given by uh, Natva Thakkarji. <clears throat> 
here at this stage when we have understood the different ideas of what is nonviolent communication we will now traverse on the different elements of nonviolent communication and uh, as you have already go, uh, been churning you have been already going through the different dimensions of uh, the dialogue making process the way in which you can have a good successful dialogue you can relate on how important each of these elements of nonviolent communications are in the context of uh, uh, ensuring a, a dialogue in the context of ensuring engagement with the stakeholders with whom you are trying to uh, communicate with so let us try to see what are these different elements of nonviolent communication the first important element of nonviolent so stage i would like to say that each of these elements are interconnected they are interwoven and all are equally important <clears throat> so first uh, element of non violent communication it means complete lack of violence in the way we communicate with others be it verbal non verbal our thoughts and ideas so already we have seen it in the explanation of mr natva thakur ji uh, this whole idea of how it's important that there is complete lack of violence in the way we communicate with others be it verbal non verbal our thoughts and ideas <clears throat> the second most important element of non violent communication is the importance of self awareness and when we are talking of intrapersonal communication constructive self talk and inner dialogue well friend when we are not self aware you see there are always there is lot of negative uh, emotions within us there are we, we, if we introspect ourselves we will find so much of negative energies negative emotions idea is how to overcome these so we need to be self aware we need to be self aware of all of our weaknesses and our positivities also equally important is that how we develop our inner uh, communication ecosystem that is constructive in nature like when our self talk becomes destructive when our inner dialogue becomes destructive then it actually gets reflected in the outer world <clears throat> so how we need to be calm uh, we peace within oneself in fact uh, there is this beautiful quote of uh, uh, venerable uh, thiknathan peace within oneself peace in the world so constructive self talk and inner dialogue is extremely critical and for that we need to be more self aware in fact friends uh, uh, we have when we uh, uh, i uh, we have done number of workshops especially with some universities in philippines where they wanted us to focus on this particular element of non violent communication in detail on how it is important of relating to our self talk and inner dialogue how these are important for a uh, uh constructive uh constructive uh, communication with the outside world so this is the second important element of non violent communication the third important element of non violent communication is how we use different appropriate and positive language and expand our emotional vocabulary you see many times what happens is that we are not able to express our emotions we we don't we have very small vocabulary of how we express our thoughts and ideas to the others and much of the problem happens because of that also much of the problem is happens of that because we might find in a situation we may not uh, be having any kind of a positive uh, uh, language the words that we are using that is something very very critical so we need to work uh, uh, continuously to see how we can use appropriate and positive language and expand our emotional vocabulary <clears throat> that is something very very important <clears throat> in fact uh, as uh, uh, archbishop desmond tutu has said language is very powerful language does not just describe quality language creates the reality it describes we should try to take responsibility of our action words and feelings and not blame others for these so a very very profound statement as you see the language that we are using in our daily life we are responsible for that and we should not get overboard and blame others for that in fact that's very important you see language is the heart of conflict all conflicts happen because of the language that might be used in a particular way in a particular fashion and we need to look at it very very seriously i suppose <coughs> 
another very very important element of nonviolent communication is avoidance of stereotypes you see what happens is that for instance uh, you want to work with say the people who are homeless there are again there will be a lot of stereotypes attached to them so if you are trying to go and engage with them you want to have a talk with them you want to have a conversation with them if you have in your back of your mind certain stereotypes related to the people who are homeless then you will never be able to have a open and frank conversation so much of the problem is that there are there are so much of many types of stereotypes we are there there are a lot of cultural stereotypes you might be stereotyping people from different groups different communities etc etc so when i start want to have a dialogue with someone if already in my mind there are different factors that are there different stereotypes that are going in my mind ki okay this person must be like that and that so i will never be able to have or get engaged uh, get engaged you know proper dialogue with that particular group or a person so avoidance of stereotypes is extremely important for a uh, you know healthy communication ecosystem whenever there is a stereotype there will be a problem so how we avoid them is something which is a challenge for all of us most uh, another important aspect of nonviolent communication is the power of empathy <clears throat> you see uh, in fact many people have said that there is a, you know short of empathy deficit in the world today and what is important is that how we uh, you know improve our power of empathy how we improve our empathetic skills skills of empathy because unless and until we put ourselves into the shoes of others and deeply try to understand the problems or issues of concerns of those groups or people we will not be able to work with them we will never be able to engage with them you know and also you see it is something which are, we have always you see human if you uh, if you read some of the interesting literature on empathy we will find that uh, we have always been empathetic it is because of the increased uh, commercialization mad race for competition materialistic culture etc etc somehow we find that our uh, skills of empathy seems to be declining or there is a deficit in empathy empathy so how we are able to enhance our skills of empathy is something we need to look at and that is an important element of nonviolent communication and in a dialogue if you are not empathetic if you don't empathize with the group that you are having a dialogue with you will not be able to uh, have a open dialogue with anyone so power of empathy is extremely important we have already talked on the importance of compassion again understanding the suffering of the others very important in fact when you are talking of empathy just remember Gand uh, let us uh, remember gandhi's uh, <coughs> talisman when he is saying that we need to look at the last person whenever we are thinking of something we must look at the uh, last person in the society so that is a very powerful statement of empathy so we need to see how important it is and similar is the importance of compassion how we can develop the skills of compassion in fact uh, you see when we are talking of compassion there is lot of scope for all of us to develop our skills of compassion in our daily lives and the more compassionate we are the more we will be able to understand the sufferings of others and relate to them and reach out to them <coughs> uh flexibility and openness in our communication just think of uh, again uh, when we are talking of the gandhian approach to nonviolent communication you see uh, again much of uh, gandhi even during the freedom struggle of india you will find that he was always opening he was always he never closed the doors of communication with his adversaries as what we say the britishers he was always the channels of communication was always open and he was quite flexible in his approach in that case so if uh, uh, you see much of the problem happens because uh, we get into a situation where we are not flexible we feel that we are correct 
and not the other person. And when such kind of a situation happens, then there is a breakdown in communication. So flexibility is something very, very important. So uh, if we keep on uh, striving to say that, you uh, know, our so-called quote unquote ego problem that no, 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 I am the person who is always right, not the other person. So that actually results in a dysfunctional communication system. And similar is the issue of openness. We need to be open, even if there is a, you know, dispute with someone, let us try to see how open we are. And as I said, right at the beginning, that these are something which comes with practice and not through any set formula as such. So flexibility and openness in our communication is yet another important element of nonviolent communication. You see, another all these altruistic tendencies that we are talking about, empathy, compassion, gratitude, these are, if you see, uh, not just important philosophical terms, but are also important in the context of psychology. If you see, uh, these are all linked to the neurosciences of the brain and several psychological studies have been done. And these studies suggest that uh, the more you express empathy, the more compassionate you are, the more gratitude you uh, express, uh, thanking other people for whatever they have done to you, then uh, as uh, you will, it will lead you to be less stressful and it also contributes to your well-being. It is not just developing a good uh, relationship with others or ensuring a good conversation with others, but it is actually for your own benefit because you become less stressful and you are uh, able to handle pressures in a much uh, pressures in a much better way. So these are something very important. These altruistic tendencies and also what is important is that the more we uh, practice these altruistic tendencies uh, you see much of the again much of the problem happens because we have a very narrow approach we have a very narrow perspective what we are thinking is correct not the others we are not many of us are not attuned to uh, looking at different perspectives at one go so what is the challenge before all of us is to see how we can uh, understand different kind of perspectives, assimilate it and try to develop our own ideas. So that is important. So assimilation of different perspectives uh, can be much easier when we probably practice some of these altruistic tendencies. So expression of gratitude. Then connecting with needs of others. You see, each one of us have different needs and when possibly some of our needs do not get fulfilled, it is possible that we might behave in a particular way. So, uh, in fact, when there is a small little conflict, possibly, uh, it is so important, like say, if I'm having a conflict with X, Y, Z, if I'm able to connect with the need of that particular person, why, what really, what are the needs of that particular person are no, not fulfilled because of which she or he is behaving in such a way. I will give you an example. Some uh, two years back, I was having this workshop uh, with the Delhi Judicial Academy and uh, the session was being chaired by a very senior uh, judge of the Delhi High Court. And she was exactly uh, on this point, gave an interesting example. She, was, she said that uh, there was a particular case that was happening in her court uh, of, uh, between a brother and a sister and uh, it was a litigation. So she felt she could uh, try to see what were the reasons why such a litigation was happening. So she called that uh, lady to her chamber to see if some kind of a mediation could be done or find out. So what she told was that when she talked to that uh, lady at length at a depth she felt that the whole conflict started of a very very small little issue in the sense key that lady felt that her brother who was younger to her and her sister-in-law both did not adequately respect her and that small little issue had you know engulfed into a situation where both of them had landed in the court so many of the conflicts might go out of the hand when we are not able to connect those things at a very basic level. At, you know, uh, we can actually, if we are able to see how we connect with needs of others, what uh, needs of our own, like what are those needs of us which are not being fulfilled and what are the needs of the others which are not being fulfilled. If we are able to understand that, much of the problem will be uh, solved. We will be able to handle much of these conflicts in a much more uh, constructive way. So connecting with needs of others is an extremely critical element of nonviolent communication. 
you see friends much of the problem again one of the major problem today especially in the morning i was having a session uh, uh, with the students of a college in uh, bengal and we were talking on the essence of listening and we felt ki much of the problems that happens is that ki we are not ready to listen to each other for probably down the time uh, because of so much of competing indulgences and so much of issues complex issues that are there in our society we probably have lost the skill the art and science of listening you see listening is something very important listening helps us to grow because the more we listen uh, we are actually that means acknowledging the the presence of the other person we are also acknowledging what she or he is speaking and that helps in engaging just think of a situation someone is talking to you and you your body language and the way you are speaking shows that you are not listening so what will the, the other person will feel hurt and there will never be a engagement there cannot never be a dialogue the essence of dialogue is how we listen to each other so active and deep listening skill is important so listening not only helps us to grow but also when we are talking of listening in a group situation it helps the group to grow it helps the group group to be more cohesive because when each and every member in a group are listening to each other it helps a group to assimilate what each of the person is speaking and it helps in showing that each one of us them are having mutual respect for each other and are acknowledging what each other are speaking so for a healthy communication ecosystem active and deep listening is extremely critical another major problem that we find ourselves many times is moralistic judgments anything happens we are ready to jump the uh, jump into a situation where we will say no what you are doing is totally wrong without even understanding see judgmental communication as we know is always life alienating we 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 are very used to giving judgments on the others and that to moralistic judgments and that's again a problem with much of our this functional communication ecosystem we are too happy to you know <laughs> jump into the situation where we are ready to give our judgment yes what you are doing is absolutely wrong hey you you are totally you don't know anything so these are the different expressions that we probably if you realize we might use in our you know daily lives and that is something we see how we strive not to use these so that we ensure that there is no uh, you know communication breakdown because when we are using moralistic judgments then the other person feels uh, you know we are hurt the other fe- person feel that that person is not uh, doing uh, is wrong so that 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 actually leads to a problematic situation in the communication system another major problem is avoidance importance of avoidance of negative evaluative language think of a you know a school football team say you are the coach of the school football team and you have a group of uh, uh, students who are playing in the match so there is this one guy who has not scored a goal for a long time and you as a coach you will be ready to say hey you total useless fellow you need to be thrown out of the team you can't even score a goal for the team you see how coaches can be so uh, that is negative evaluative language and that demoralizes the person you see so instead of that possibly you could have said well you are trying very hard uh, i'm sure you will be able to do something good in the next match so that mo- motivates the other person so many times most of the negative evaluative language deep uh, motivates the other person you know the other person feels lost so this is again a problem when we are talking uh, of a dysfunctional communication system so for en- ensuring a non violent communication ecosystem we should practice of not getting uh, or using negative evaluative language so uh, these are the 12 important elements of non violent communication and as i said we need to see how we practice it uh, constantly in our daily lives and each one of 
these as you can realize are extremely important in the context of any kind of dialogues or any kind of conversations or discussions in fact many times we might find ourselves in a very difficult conversations but if we are used to you you know uh, practicing non violent communication it is much more helpful to use these <clears throat> so how we practice non violent communication in our daily lives is that ki how we promote positivity in uh, when we are actually adhering to these five pillars of gandhian non violence then what happens is that ki we will be able to promote positivity in our lives and avoid many of the disputes and differences that may crop up in many in our lives as we saw respect uh, understanding acceptance positive appreciation and compassion so it 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 helps in emanating positive uh, uh, energies and when we have positive energies we will be more creative we will be able to uh, you know uh, take part in various uh, activities that are you know helpful to not just us but also to the society at large also what is important when we talk of use of tactics in non violent communication is how we manage our negative communications because we are you know when our thoughts are negative as you know it will uh, you know that is very destructive it drains our energies so uh, it prevents us from being focused but the challenge for all of us is to be focused to see how we conserve our energy for constructive purposes and in that context use of non violent communication is extremely important similarly you how we manage our negative emotions constructive management of negative emotions and harnessing of positive energy in fact this is something again very very important in fact uh, when we were doing this uh, series of workshops with the central board of secondary education they wanted a full workshop on use of non violent communication in anger management because you see uh, anger is something a part of our whole life there may, it's impossible for anyone not to be angry at any point of their time we are we will always be angry at some stage or the other in our lives it's impossible as human beings but how we channelize our anger constructively is a important thing you see for instance when we are talking of electricity if there is uncontrolled electricity we will get shock we will be in trouble but when we are able to harness and manage electricity you know we are able to talk today we are able to do lot of things today because of electricity and that is well controlled which is managed properly but if it is not managed with high voltage electricity we might be in trouble so similar is the case of anger so if we are not able to channelize our anger if we are not able to manage our anger uh, it will lead to lot of stressful situations it will lead to lot of problems in that context in fact uh, during our workshops when we do in a physical mode we talk about maintaining an anger journal and a gratitude journal in fact we say that uh, you make a notebook on one side you maintain an anger journal in the anger journal what you will write basically is that during the course of the day while you are ret retiring for bed during the course of the day what were those reasons who were those people with whom you might have got angry why you got angry how you reacted and possibly now that you are trying to introspect and reflect uh, how would what do you think should have been your reaction instead of that like for instance i might have been very angry with say with my sister and uh, while i am retiring to bed and i am trying to self introspect and self reflect i might think ki okay i should not have done i should have handled the situation in a totally different way and that would not have really led to such kind of a situation so when we are maintaining an anger journal it helps us to self reflect self introspect on uh, how we reacted in a particular situation and possibly uh, if we had been able to manage our anger in a more constructive way how we might have reacted similarly when we are talking of a gratitude journal friends in fact let me tell you again lot of psychological studies have been done uh, on these aspects and it shows that when we are maintaining these anger journals or gratitude journal it helps us to become more self aware and self evolved when we are talking of gratitude journal what we do is basically we will <coughs> 
right during the course of the day what were those who were those people because of whom we might have benefited in some way or the other and it is not just people there could be different circumstances we might think those were very negative but we might have learned something out of that and let us thank that particular event or incident let's thank that person so while retiring to bed let us self introspect on what were those events what were those incidents who were those people because of whom we might have learned something we might have uh, gained something we might have benefited something so maintaining an anger journal and a gratitude journal are extremely important <clears throat> and it helps in uh, you know uh, yeah in uh, uh, getting over with our stressful conditions and uh, it actually these actually contributes to our well-being so uh, i have told you about conflict resolution you see when there is a conflict if you just uh, you know uh, self introspect uh, and self reflect mostly what happens is that when there is a dispute say with your friend or whomsoever any kind of situation so uh, basically then it is a situation where there is a negative perception that is happening you see uh, i have a some kind of i want to blame the other person i have a negative perception of the other person and even that person with whom i am having a tiff off that person will might have some negativity on the way i am acting or the way i am behaving or the way i am talking so there are negativities in both the directions so the challenge before uh both of us if there is a conflict or dispute is how to get out of that negative perception and ensure a positive perception in that context when we are thinking when we are used to uh, uh you know practicing non violent communication and its different elements then we will find that we even if in such situation of conflicts because as we know conflicts are something organic these are natural and part of life so uh, if we are able to expand our levels of empathy if we are able to see positive things if we are able to see how we can transform that conflict which will help in transforming our relationships that will be much more positive that will contribute to a positive perception how we reframe the negative perception of the dispute to positive perception these are going to help us in that when we use the tools of non violent communication also when we see that when we are using uh, when we are adept in being an empathetic when we are adept in being compassionate when we are adept in expression of gratitude and all these altruistic tendencies uh there are some several researches which has been done and it shows that it actually contributes to pro social behavior like say promotion of voluntary communities we are able to reach out to communities and engage with the communities and develop deep connections with different groups and communities at large if we are really willing to and as natwar thakkar has done a lot of work on the issue of emotional bridge building it actually helps in emotional bridge building between different groups of people so these are something very very important in that context <clears throat> so in fact healthy communication is stress buster it helps in you know my uh you know underlining point is that if we are practicing healthy communication what we call as non violent communication it's actually a stress buster you will realize that when you are so much of positive communication with others uh you will you know it's very rare that you will become stressed you, even in difficult situations you will be able to come out of it and it's been you know the numerous workshops that we have conducted and numerous view points that we have gathered from different participants both from india and abroad uh, this is such an underlining important factor how healthy communication is something which is stress buster so finally what is important is how we develop meaningful dialogues using non violent communication this is the whole mark when we are using different elements of this uh, non violent communication also uh, in fact when we have these workshops we talk of team building because when we are using the different tools of non violent and different elements of non violent communication you will uh, probably agree with me that it leads to greater trust because Uh, unless and until when you are working in a team there is trust between each other the you know the spirit of solidarity the spirit of uh, reciprocity uh, prosity 
uh, you know, teams are not be, will not be strong and cohesive. So what is important is that when we are using these strategies, it helps in more evolved leadership and also helps in the team building process. So uh, these are some of those points I thought we could uh, flag off and something very important uh, when we are talking of nonviolent communication. And to end, uh, this is a beautiful quote of Dr. Martin Luther King. We must learn to live together as brothers or we will perish together as fools. And uh, it, again, an extremely profound statement of uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela, who said, as I walked out at the door towards the gate, that would lead to my freedom. I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison. So let us try to see how we can promote the spirit of forgiveness, to promote the spirit of reconciliation, so that we are able to engage even with people whom we may disagree with. In fact, uh, at the end, let me share, this is the link of ours. Uh, 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 you are requested to visit our website and this is something you can all do. As I said, it has got a major global traction at this stage. Uh, most successful, a very, very successful course, a free online course that we are running for the last almost one year. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, so we uh, now I think we could have some interactions. Yes, please. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Kundu, uh, for this presentation. Um, now we open the floor for questions and answers or comments. Anybody? You can mute yourself and ask. Uh, can I say something, Beza? Yeah, can I? Hello? Yes, of course. Of course, please. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Kundu. It was really nice to listen to you and understand the importance of nonviolence communication in everyday life and how uh, it helps or rather uh, either to climb or to perish. Um, I had had a very bad experience just a couple of days before. And as you were speaking, I realized that had I made my <laughs> communication a little more probably on a different note, things would not have been escalated to that bitterness, uh, which happened between uh, me and my students, you know, like uh, maybe uh, everybody has ego and I'm not God. And I also have certain kind of self ego. And uh, now I realize that had uh, I controlled my communication, probably things would have been better. But when you talk about this and I, I see, sir, I'm a person if I make a mistake, I can say sorry on a national television because accepting mistake does not make you lower any which ways, you know, you rise in life, you know, and we are not good. So we make mistakes, you know, and, and uh, again, uh, the cherry on the ice cream is that I teach in a Gandhian institution. We are Gandhi section. You know? So mm -hmm. we have to exercise more caution or something like that. My only question to you is that empathy is a feeling where you put yourself into somebody's shoes and try to understand why somebody did what they did in the manner that they did. You know, it is like that. Basically, to a layman, this is what is the meaning of empathy. The problem is that when you wear somebody else's shoe, you are not that person. You have your own mindset. You have your own thinking. So probably you are not able to understand what his mind was when he spoke or when he did or when he reacted in a particular way that he did or she did or the person did. The problem is some people are absolutely unreasonable, illogical, and they don't tend to deviate from the stance that they have taken. And then the conversation goes haywire. It turns into a bitter conversation probably it leads to a lifetime acrimonious relationship with somebody. I remember I don't talk to somebody in my building for last 32 years because she slapped my son once upon a time when he was young and he broke the bathroom, uh, you know, those slides panels. She was telling not to play and he did not listen because he was a young boy of 10 years. 
and he smashed the window. So my question was, why did you hit? Call me, I'll repay. There's no need to hit my child. And I think last 33 years I'm staying in this building, I did not speak to her because I failed to understand that how can a mother slap a child for playing? I mean, my idea is that. So probably she's not trying to wear my shoes. What have you to say about this, sir? Thank you very much. This is what I wanted to yes. say. Definitely we come to such kind of a situation where the other person is not seen to, uh, you know, uh, we are, are getting to the shoes of ours or we are not willing to get into the shoes of others because of different complex issues. It could be cultural issues. It could be stereotyping, as we have said. It could be different issues. So, but of course, the whole thing is that how uh, we can attune ourselves because if we are empathy, because what is the situation is that there is definitely, we will all agree that there seems to be in the world that we are living in, there seems to be a deficit in empathy. We are not ready to put our ships into the shoes of others. I agree with you that we have our own perceptions, we have our own understanding, our own way in which we look at things and which could be totally different from the what the other person is doing. But the probably one of the problem uh, which I feel is that many of us are not even willing to you know, see ourselves into the shoe of others. We feel that no, no, not at all. There is no way that person can be right or no way uh, I can agree with that person. On uh, If that person has done wrong, there is no way anything. Uh, we are not ready to even forgive in some way or the other. So that is the problem possibly because of that. Uh, you know, I remember this beautiful quote of uh, Barack Obama when he talks about, uh, you know, this whole issue of empathy deficit. You no, know, there seems to be serious empathy deficit in the world possibly you know we are too entangled in so much of uh, you know different uh, way things and different you know uh, so much of competing indulgences the materialistic uh, thing too much of competition we feel that it is not good enough to even uh, even uh, even consider trying to be in some other's shoes so the idea is how we can possibly look at uh, in a different way is a big challenge for, I think, each one of us. Okay, thank you, sir, for that for that clarification. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Do we have any more questions or comments? Dr. Kundu, we, um, yes. is there something you want to add? I, I, I don't think there's uh, more questions. Bezad, Bezad, I want to say just one thing. I want to ask Dr. Kunu. We are not, I am not a great, uh, though I have got a very enriched library. We have got 33,000 books of Mahatma Gandhi in all possible languages, you know. You know, very mm -hmm. enriched library that we have in our college. Mm -hmm. uh, I just mm -hmm. want to ask that uh, whatever I have read, I have heard that Gandhiji was very obstinate. He was, never used to listen to anybody. He never listened. Mm -hmm. He did what he wanted mm -hmm. to do. He had his own mm -hmm. thought process and uh, he never budged from what he thought. If he thought that he will not drink milk, he did not drink cow's milk to the extent of compromising on his health and Kasturba was absolutely on the edge in Mumbai, Grant Road, Mani Bhavan. And a mm -hmm. shepherd came in and he said, okay, I will offer him goat's milk. And he gave an explanation and then he had a milk. Or his son was about to die and the doctor said, please give him mutton soup. He said, let the son die. I will not allow him to have anything non veg yeah, he was never, uh, he never budged from his positions. Yeah, yeah. So, way. sorry to use that word, but he was very strong in his opinion. Then mm -hmm. how come compassion was his, uh, one of the most, uh, you know, decorated, uh, you can say, medal uh, on his persona that people quote Gandhi after his departure uh, for so many years, like almost 50, 55, I think 60 48, so almost 73 years, 73 yeah. years 73. have gone and still people quote uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, for being compassionate. I mean, I, I am I am still not able to 
get this quote unquote balance of his personal ideology whatever i have read but about. i think we could have a uh, discourse on this uh, with more senior gandhians at some stage with their okay. you see every every people will have a different characters i will have a different character with one point but on the other point it could be that it shows my compassionate characters it uh, uh, like you know different different of uh, uh, analysis of diff- one's character not so possibly i think we could have a very interesting uh, discussion on this gandhi the compassionate uh, uh, someone we can say the person and with some senior gandhians coming in and with some critical questions i think it's always good to question uh, you see that is so important i i really feel it's uh, you have given me the really a uh, good topic uh, to have a discourse and we would request also so whenever you, you organize back. that whenever you are please don't forget me i will i will no, no, join you definitely 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 Thank you. It, would, it would be very interesting to listen to some very senior gandhians on this what are their perspective on this very important yes. thank you <laughs> yes please yes please okay um any more questions otherwise we end the session here um in that case we come to the end of our session today thank you so much doc for um uh, joining us today dr medhavi askundu and thank, thank you for the time for for this brilliant presentation